This is a video about porting and pipe, how they work together, and actually more about what I do when I analyze an engine and I want to change it. So I'm going to start with my bike, my motorized bicycle. And it's already updated pretty much to be like a motorcycle, except it still has some limited porting because of the transfer size and it's got a single exhaust port. But other than that, it's it's pretty much pretty much the same. So um, first off, I need to know what the uh, top RPM is set by the the pipe. So I'll look at my free spreadsheet sheet calculator and see what it says. Okay, right here, as you can see on this spreadsheet down at uh, row 87. Okay, my exhaust duration is like 163. Piston to end of belly, that's 765, so I'll enter that. And of course, this, this calculation out here, um, it's giving me like 8700 as the end of power band RPM. It's not a really precise calculation because it just relies on a simple formula. If I want to be more exact, I go to my expansion chamber calculator, which is right here, and I've got the data entered into it. So going to sheet three, I see that it's very, very end of the pipe power band is 9,500. Okay. And that simple calculator said it was right around here, so you've got this range right here. But you know, for a, a small engine that's got very limited porting like this, usually after that pipe power band drops off, starts going low, the engine doesn't last very much longer than that. So right around here is what it, what it should be on a 48cc. Okay, so um, next we'd want to check the porting. And for that, I've got the porting calculator. And I've entered in the uh, width of the exhaust port going down one millimeter. Let me see if I can find a picture of that. Yeah, this is it. Like this is without the auxiliary ports. Drawing a line through the paper trace. Um, one, every, every line is one millimeter down. Then you take the widths of each one of those sections and you enter those in right here. And then you get the the, uh, the distance over the ports, um, all the other little details the, the program asks for. And you can click calculate and it's telling me the um, The uh, the pipe's porting the end of, the, of its the fat part of its power band. And this is the confusing part. When you say power band, you always think of the final power band of the engine, and the final power band is actually a combination of two power bands, the pipe and the porting. If the if the porting power band is too far low. And it becomes too weak by the time the, the pipe power band is in effect. It may not be able to carry it at all. So they've got to be somewhat close to each other. In this case, they're not close at all. 4700 is right here where the, where the power starts dropping off. And this green line is somewhat like delivery ratio. This red line is going below, below the 1.0 horizontal line indicates how much the exhaust uh, pressure 
exist when that uh, transfer is being opened. In this case, at, at uh, 7,500 RPM, I've got 85% um, of the transfer opening not being interfered with by the exhaust pressure, the combustion pressure. So it's got 15% of overlap there. Like if this is like if this is the top of the transfer port and the piston is going down, it won't release the transfer. It won't release the transfer. Finally, the exhaust pressure is low enough that that transfer pressure can come in. The transfer pressure is very low. It's like five to seven pounds. So that exhaust has to be almost completely down to zero by the time it will let the transfer come in. Okay, and this in this situation is for um, an engine that has its uh, the the beefy part of its porting down in low RPM, and a race bike that's designed with you know really good porting situation, you're not going to have this at all. And this beefy part is going to be like the top the top RPM would be something like right here, and just have a little bit of overlap. But anyway, this porting calculator is fantastic. There's two ways of looking at it. We've got the, ex the percent of the exhaust pulse that op overlaps the open transfers. Okay? Or the percent, percent of the, the, the time that that combustion pressure exists starting at the beginning of the opening of the exhaust port. And then we've got the amount of uh, transfer time between the, the transfer opening to bottom dead center that's not being blocked by that combustion pressure. If this goes at any RPM, either one of these goes into the bad zone, that's the end. Your, your engine's not going to pull any more RPM by that. And this limit is 22%, well, close to 22%. It has some slight variation there, but usually around 22%. And this one has to be above 80%, okay? This engine is, is revving to 7,500. And so um, at 7,500, we've still got enough exhaust-free transfer. Not ideal, but enough well I mean we're close <laughs> close to the end of the allowable zone and this is right at the end of its allowable zone which is why the engine won't pull more than 7500 even though the pipe is set to allow the engine to go up to 8600 and so um Using these two programs now, I know the the pipe's fine. I can I've just got to change the porting to be able to to match that that eighty six hundred RPM of the pipe, and that's what it is with each each engine. You know, it's and it takes computer calculations to do it. Those old charts that we used to go by, those were for the old engines. The old single port exhaust that, you know, had a, you know, this is the typical motocross engine back then in the 70s. Those charts were only for those engines. This bicycle engine is different. Your engine is different. You have to use a computer program to figure this stuff out. And, and that's what I do on mine. If I'm helping someone else out, that's what I do for, for theirs. That's it. Two programs. The porting calculator and the pipe calculator. So yeah, um, yeah. I don't know what else to add to it. It's just I know it's a degree of complexity that you haven't and maybe have not heard before. That there's two power bands, and if they're too far apart, you're not going to reach the end of the power band that the pipe is set for, which is what th this case is right here. 
let me show you the porting. This is the porting. Single exhaust port. Been modified, of course. 31.5 is its width on paper, and the bore is 40. So even though you've heard that the rule is 75%, this is 79%. I've got another one, another engine that's 81%. That rule was 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 set for for 250 cc, 175 cc, and bigger. That rule is not for small engines, I guarantee you. And I can fully explain that, but that's another story for another day. So you can see it's got one transfer port on this side of the engine, one transfer port on this side. And believe it or not, some of the old Husqvarna engines had that, that situation, but they had really wide transfer ports. I look at those and I'm like, I, I say, oh my gosh, and the rings didn't snag on those? So yeah, they, they made up for the lack of extra transfer ports by making theirs extra wide. And, you know, the modern engines have the, have the auxiliary ports here, which is very good. Because with that extra area, you don't have to make the height of the exhaust port so much. You can keep it keep it lower, which gives you more <clears throat> more trap volume. Which to me, the the true engine size is the, is the trap volume. You know, when you calculate engine size, you're using a four-stroke formula. When you look at a spark plug color chart, you look at a four-stroke chart. So. I don't know if you notice right here, it says cold duration and hot duration. You know, I'm a perfectionist. What can I say? When the engine gets hot, the conrod expands, stretches more than the cylinder does. And it causes the piston to rise in the cylinder. That's why you can only have so much minimal amount of squish uh, clearance before it'll actually hit the head okay so when it when it rises when the engines get hot guess what your duration goes down and so I, I always try to use the hot durations in my calculations you can see that we've got um, we've lost 2.2 .2 degrees on the exhaust and we've lost um, 1.9 degrees on the transfers. Yeah, sorry for this short video, but I just wanted to talk about that. This is my website right here. If you want to see some interesting stuff, go to my website. Okay, my friends, thanks for watching.